Okay, we are now recording. Okay. I will uh, call the meeting to uh, call me to order. And uh, let's just do a quick uh, roll call. Uh, I guess, how do we, Kelly, how have you been doing roll calls? Can you just see everybody and, and know everyone you need to have? Or? I can, I can look at the participant list. I've already um, written down who's here. <clears throat> All right, sounds good guys. Then uh, the first order of business will be to uh, um, approve the minutes from uh, the last meeting. Any questions, concerns, or comments? No, how about a, a motion to approve them if uh, everyone is on board? I moved. All right, that was Richard. And then was there a second there? Well, second, second that's Chris. Chris, perfect. Thank you for speaking up, guys. So uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. All right, the sustainability plan discussion and work group formation. Ellie, you want to take it? Sure. Um, hold on, don't we have to do public comments? Oh yeah, public comments we were talking about. Let's, uh, I, I heard a little bit of that discussion. You want to just do a quick public comments here before we uh, get started with it? Any public Sounds comments? Good. I thought Kelly's, uh, I'll start out, I thought yeah, the 50 most beautiful places in the country, I thought that was pretty awesome that <laughs> Kelly set out, so thank you for doing that one. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of funny. We were in with quite a crowd. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, so technically it was town of Middleton. <laughs> right. <laughs> Close so, enough. So I have a comment, but um, it's really related to one of the agenda items on the solar group I. Um, would you prefer I hold it you, to then or you should you make all the public comments should all be made in the beginning and then public is not allowed to speak during the agenda. Well, that's not how the meeting's been done in the past. Ever. But if you've changed the rules, then that that's how we have to do it in the council. Let's, uh, let's do this. Why don't you make a, a comment now and then I you know, if there's anything else that we need to get clarification on our question on, we'll do it. Let's let's try it this way and see what happens, and then uh, we can, uh, you know, we can make adjustments if we need to. But let's uh, go ahead and, and uh, make a comment towards the agenda items if you want to. Okay. Um, so right now, there's a question about whether or not Middleton would join the Solar Group I of Madison, and then there's a fee. And uh, right now, there's a solar group I program happening for Western Dane County from the town of Middleton um, all the way out west. However, um, they said it would be okay if people in Middleton joined. And so my condo association um, is actually very actively working on seeing if, you know, this is something we can do. So um, I just wanted to bring that up to your attention to see if the city wanted to piggyback on that rather than the Madison one. Um, and I don't know if that would save you money. They've already done their vendor choices. Um, they, they went out for bid. They got incredible um, cost reductions and, um, and they're moving forward. All the installations have to be done this year they've got two really great contractors. And so I um, just wanted to bring that to your attention and um, it could be something um, to look into. Oh, great. I think that's a good thing to keep on the radar as we discuss the Madison, because I do think there's, we, we've had different discussions in the past, but I'd be good to, to know that there's another one out there and kind of understand the difference of them. So thank you, Sherry. Sherry, do you think that they would really be um, able to take on, you know, you know, let's say 12 people in Middleton, the city of Middleton wanted to sign on to this? Or was it I don't, sort of? I don't think there'll be a problem. It's being run, so Madison is being done by Renew, and this one is being done by um, Solar Legacy Co-op, uh -huh. or like Solar Co-op. So they're the ones who are organizing it. 
And, you know, as far as they're concerned, the more the merrier. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, certainly you can you touch base with them. I just know that our, I mean, I live in Middleton and I'm going to, I mean, our, we've got six owners who are interested in being part of it and they had no problem with that. That's great. Yeah. Good. Thanks for that input. And oh, oh, and by the way, they're having an, an informational meeting about the program tomorrow night at 6.30. And it's a, a web invitation. And um, what I could do, Kelly, is send you the information about that and you could forward it to the members of the committee if anybody's interested. Okay, that sounds great. I was in the first meeting, um, the Zoom meeting that they had what, just a few, what was it, Thursday, I think? Um, yeah, that's the second one. And Warren Gaskell is the one that's been sending emails about it. So um, I think it's very easy just to register for it. So you should be able to do that. It, it does sound really exciting. Um, so. Yeah. Who is the one who's organizing this one, did you say? It's Legacy Solar Co-op, along with, um, oh, I can't remember which township it is. Um, Anyway, I'll just I'll pull it together and um, maybe actually I'll put the registration information in the chat box. That, that might be the fastest. Awesome. That Thank sounds you. great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Kelly, the sustainability plan. Okay. Um, well, Spencer and I had talked about this months ago. Like none of these um, agenda items really, except for the COVID um, placeholder. Uh, excuse me, Kelly. Were you, uh -huh. were you wanting to use the public comment to make a staff update, or is that? Um, I could. I don't want to do anything that I outside of the rules. <laughs> what do you think, Spencer? Okay. Um, what is the question? If I think I'm... you can. Give me a, I think a staff update you can give us whenever you uh, whenever it's, it, it's appropriate to fit in on it. Okay. Would that be appropriate now? Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to do anything with the rest of the agenda. Um, it fits in here and there. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I would say yeah. I mean, I think we'd go ahead and give us a staff update and then we'll, then we'll go into the other items. This is okay, it's, it's fast. Um, I'll just do the main ones. Uh, we're moving ahead on the solar installations on our municipal buildings and we've decided to not pursue solar right now, I don't think, on the EMS building, but instead um, load more solar on the mock building on Parmenter Street, the municipal operations building and Lakeview Park Shelter. Um, it's quite a lot of project management and we're sort of in the thick of it right now because Lakeview Shelter is being constructed and so it's not just um, making sure it can handle the load. It's also deciding where all the electrical will go and um, really trying to coordinate that with the architects. So we have a meeting tomorrow about that. Um, we hope to send the project out to bid. I'm guessing now, well, maybe late May, most likely early June and, um, and then award the bid, at, you know, four weeks after that. So hopefully we'll still get it installed this summer. And um, I think that's looking good. It's just a lot of, it's a lot of coordination right now and running around and lots of meetings. Um, and it's all a bit nerve wracking, but good. Um, the lead for cities is moving along. I have a meeting with public works and the stormwater engineers um, and the streetlight people to talk about Get, gathering data from those departments tomorrow and we hope to submit our prerequisites um, by the by mid-June and then submit the entire lead for cities certification um, probably very late summer maybe in September sometime um, for hopefully to get a certification around Christmas or just after that um, wow. so so that's, it's a very quick timeline for lead, I think, especially when we have some of the data gathering, I'm like, I don't know how we're gonna do this, but it is really helpful to have the technical um, help from lead. I talk to them almost weekly and they just walk me through it. So that's super helpful. It's different than if you're just doing it on your own, trying to get through it 
Um, and then the main thing we're working on right now as a planning department is finishing our comp plan, comprehensive plan. And I have finished, um, you know, one section of the Green City chapter um, internally, and we're working on it internally. But hopefully we'll, we will have a draft of the entire Green City chapter at the end of May. Um, and then we'll send that around to all the committees because um, I think by the end of May, everyone should have their chapters complete. So it will move around all the city committees so you'll get to read and look at the whole thing. Um, and there'll probably be a lot of public comment and commenting from city staff and, and city uh, elected officials on that before anything is finalized, but probably not until fall, but it, it needs to go through a lot of different um, committees for that. Um, the bird stuff right now is on hold just because I'm uh, simply can't get to it. I still hope to do what I mentioned last meeting where I send off a draft to, um, to Deb Weitzel after Matt and Mark, the city forester and public lands have a look at it. Um, but I haven't gotten any closer on that. And then um, I think I'll save the rest for the agenda items. So we can move back to the sustainability plan, I guess. All right. Yeah. So, um, right, here, Kelly. Kelly, okay. I have a question. I was muted. I'm sorry. Um, whatever happened with when we uh, had that quick meeting to look at the um, corridor plan, did that ever get approved? It did get approved, yep. Um, after a lot of back and forth with all the committees, council did approve it last, the last meeting or a meeting ago, two meetings ago, can't remember now. Um, yep, thank you for, ha for coming to that um, meeting on short notice and providing those comments. That's what Mark and Matt were really hoping we'd say and they said that was the best possible outcome. All the recommendations we gave were exactly what they had hoped to see from this committee so it was really helpful for them okay hey, um kelly along with an update for the city so usually the after the election the mayor appoints new position new people for the committee um is that is there a timing on on turnover or change or do we know anything more about uh the mayor's uh thoughts for the committee I don't know about that. He was asked at um, our last staff meeting last Wednesday, I believe, and about where he was on his timeline for doing that because it's the mayor who appoints committee members. And so he said he was in process and he was interviewing people um, at, the, at that moment and that everything will be worked out and he would have decisions made, I believe he said by the May Maybe it's the May 19th meeting, but I haven't heard anything from him since then. Have, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if you wanna talk about it here, but I don't know if, if any of you have heard from him or gone in to speak with him or be interviewed by him. I had um, a phone interview. You had a phone interview? So I, I don't know anything about it or what he's thinking or you know, if other people have applied and what decision he'll make. Yeah, I was I was interviewed by phone. I I did decline to be interviewed this time, which typically in the past has meant that I wouldn't be reappointed. Um, so just kind of an FYI. Okay, that's Lee. Yeah. I uh, I did have a conversation with him, and he was asking um, opinions and questions about everyone on the committee and uh, kind of directions that we're going, and I. Uh, I reiterated, I, I really think we have a very good group here. And I think what I really like about all of you guys um, is the, the different perspectives that we bring to it. In the past, sometimes we've had people who have been very heavy on the, I'm gonna get on the ground and I'm gonna get my hands dirty. And there have other been other people and pie in the sky. Um, and I think we have a really good mix of Hi, this guy. I'm going to get my hands dirty and I'm going to bring a, a lot of knowledge. So um, just for everyone's knowledge, that's, uh, that's kind of what I said. And I, I, I do feel that about the group. So thank, thank you. Thanks, Spencer. All right. Sustainability plan. Okay. Um, so I don't want to dictate necessarily how we do this. Um, 
this was um, it's been on the agenda for a while now. We haven't really met as a committee since January. So it's been a while since this has been top of mind that we've been discussing in meetings. Uh, Spencer and I, and Spencer jump in um, if I'm not reiterating this right from the past, but Spencer and I had discussed, it's a, it's a massive plan. It needs um, updated. Our most recent update was completed by um, Slipstream consultants who went through and tried to make sense of what we had, what we didn't have, added indicators, more indicators, reorganized it just a bit, but largely built off the 2010 plan. And so what is in our packet right now is the most recent work we have on the sustainability plan. And Spencer and I had discussed that it's such a massive project that perhaps we should break this up into chapters and have um, subgroup, join a subgroup, uh, which is not mandatory if you don't want to, but um, if you can pick um, a chapter that you have interest in or that you have expertise in, and then outside of the committee, um, go through that chapter, come up with, um, you know, you like certain parts, which parts you would change, what you might add to it, um, and then come back to the a committee meeting and we can go through it, uh, maybe a short presentation with what you thought or came up with, um, and try to work through it chapter by chapter through the next nine, 10 months. Um, and then I think there, prob there also needs to be just a, backing up a bit, a larger discussion on are these, um, are these, you know, chapters of the, of the plan, what we want, do we, do we want to add resiliency, equity, are those things, you know, peppered throughout the plan and not their own standalone chapters, like that's a discussion to have, and then um, the subgroup work would be one route to go. I know in Madison they're doing a similar thing with their sustainability plan, but um, they're writing an executive summary of each chapter the, of their existing plan in order to update it without having to rewrite the whole thing. Our plan is pretty old, um, or it had was old from 2010. So um, what's been with the changes that have been made? I think a lot of them are good, but maybe you know some of them maybe are even already outdated since it's been three years since 2017. So um, I'm just trying to think of ways we can go through this um, and break it up into manageable chunks where we're not all overwhelmed with reading the entire thing and then commenting on it. Um, so if we look at the kind of the chapter, if I just chime in here. Um, I, so I, one of the things I would like to think about is, is each of the groups don't necessarily have to rewrite it. It's bringing your ideas. Kelly is a very good writer. We've seen from all of the grants and everything, but um, if if someone is a writer and wants to do some writing, I think that's great. I think it's a matter of, of getting together, whether it's virtually or in person, whatever point this is happens, and going through um, these different chapters. And the, the main breakout chapters that we have, if I, I mean, um, we have solid waste, water, transportation, energy, land use, um, economy, food, and fair trade is one category, public outreach and education, um, greenhouse uh, gas emissions, community, and health. Um, and then we get data for those. And so those are the main groups. Um, there are people on here who I almost I uh, just want to start assigning positions too because you have a have knowledge in it, but uh, I'm going to let people volunteer before we, I assign anybody to uh, to extra groups. And I, what, I, what I'm hoping is, uh, and Kelly, were we talking about um, what is the time frame for wanting to get this done, the, the entire plan? When When is the goal to have this whole plan done? Well, um, it'll piggyback well, I think, with the comp plan, and the comp plan might help inform the sustainability plan, so it's not horrible timing, really. Yeah. Um, but I do think it'll take months and months. It'd be great if we could get it done within within the year, not not before January, but you know, within the next nine, ten months, maybe. I don't yeah. want to be too ambitious because I don't know how this COVID stuff is going to play out, or if we're going to get pulled off on tangents um, with more immediate things. But I'd love to keep plugging away on this. 
um, even if I had a little bit of guidance, I could, you know, take your recommendations and write chunks of it and bring it back. Um, because the comp plan work will not be as heavy after May. It's going to be a crazy two or three weeks here, but then I'll have more time to do writing and editing on the sustainability plan and the comp plan will be fresh in my mind. So um, I think that's a, I think that's great. And so if we break it down and say there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 chapters, right? Overall in the groups, if we look at that as uh, if we had one, we had one group present each month for the next 10 months. And then the last two months, if we're just talking a year time frame of reworking the, you know, the introduction or the, the end of it, um, that kind of gives us a time frame and a path moving forward. Um, would that seem like a reasonable time frame, Kelly? Did you say a year? Or 10 yeah, it's, it's, it's 10 months. There's 10 chapters yeah. of, of focus that we have on there. And if we, uh, if we discuss, because I don't want every committee meeting to, for the next year to be dominated by this subject, but if we discuss one chapter of it and have a presentation each time by one chapter of it, it will, it, you know, 10 months into it, and then it's going to be a couple months of bringing the whole thing together in the summary, right? Would make sense. And maybe there's going to be a, a time where we're going to have, um, Maybe we want we want to have a group that's kind of overlapping, and we have energy and greenhouse gases. I mean, I don't know what what ones are going to really overlap there, but maybe there's we could could double up a month if we wanted to speed it up. But I, I, ten months seems to be reasonable. Any uh, objections to that, guys? A comment. Um, I mean, it's kind of overwhelming when I look through it and all the different items that were listed under each topic area and. Um, and some clearly we're outdated and certainly we want to be up updating new ones. I'm wondering if we can prioritize, as I guess you're suggesting, which, which chapters we really want to put focus on rather than think we need to do all 10 or whatever the number is concurrently. And for example, the water would be somewhat of a big one, but I, I was wondering whether we could even ask the Water Resources Commission to really take a look at that and give us their take on it before we start doing something on that ourselves. Um, I mean, are they doing anything in that area? Have they done anything? Uh, and maybe we could even ask them. In other words, you know, if there, if there are certain ones that other groups could look at and then allow us to take their comments or and then, you know, finalize it. Um, but then just put our effort on prioritizing maybe two or three of these because doing this whole thing over and could absorb a lot of time. That's my feeling. Hey, I think that's a great idea um, that Richard has, you know, given just like the pheasant branch plan, it really helped everybody out. It, if, if, nobody was being redundant or going in different directions from anyone else. I think that's a super idea. Right. And so the question would be like, Dick, would you want to take the chapter and present it to the water resources committee and say, we, this is, this is where we have. And then could you guys come and work on it and bring it back to us? I mean, is that something that would make, make sense how to do it? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess that's what I'm asking you, well, whether me take it to them, I would, I would be okay going to one of their meetings, but can we just as a committee ask, given that we have the charge of updating the whole sustainability plan, could we give them the water one, which is an important one, to them and ask them to comment on it and put you know, their work on it and then get it back to us and then we'll um, finalize it and maybe give it back to them for more review or whatever. But uh, rather than us start with it, and I probably you were thinking maybe I should be on this thing, but I you would rather volunteer. <laughs> well, you know, I would volunteer to be on it, but I really would feel like they ought to, this is a topic area that they have potentially more expertise in than all of us. Certainly 
you know, I've got expertise in certain areas, but a lot of this is, is in areas where there's engineers and they're, they're on that commission. So Kelly, is that something where we could, uh, could make motions to send it to that committee for review and have their input on what they think needs to be done? Sure. Um, that my only cautionary thing would just be to, that I wanna make sure that um, the sustainability focus stays front and center and that we push, you know, that they, they, they do have, know the engineering and they um, make great decisions. I just wanna make sure we're always pushing all the departments mm -hmm. to think, you know, from with the sustainability lens rather than the right. lens they might be coming at. But yeah, I mean, if they wanna take a first stab, that could be, um, that could be, may, we could make a motion to do that. I would also say that the water section confused me at first because I was expecting to see different things in the water section, but it was actually very focused on water consumption and conservation. And there was one action that included green infrastructure, but it wasn't so much about flooding or managing water as it was about um, reducing water use as a community, which is very important and should be in there. I just, I think that some of the water got split up between the water section and the land use section. So, you know, yeah. they might, they might want to look at those in a joint way. So if we send land use and water and some water to the water resources to have them, have them give their two cents worth on. And I think your point is well taken with the, it should be sustainability focused, but this is the sustainability plan. Like we're going to send it to them. If we have a motion to say, we want to send it to, to this committee to review and to give us their input on what sustainability actions can and, and should be, uh, uh, looked at and mentioned and updated in this plan. That seem reasonable. Yeah, you know one of the things. We, if we look at that, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things. It's just an aside. One of the things that surprised me. One of the first statements: we have an abundance of clean water, both surface and groundwater. And I thought, where is the surface water that's abundantly clean? I don't think we have any surface water that's abundantly clean. <laughs> that statement just right from the very beginning, I thought, you know, wow. And so there's there's a lot of work on this. And your point, Kelly and Spence, about all the, the intricacies of land use on this. Uh, so for us to take it on it would be a daunting task. I'd like to see, since we have a really big, important commission that works on water, I would like to see us make a recommendation that they look at this through the lens, as you said, Kelly, of sustainability and resilience. Um, and given all we've, the challenges we face now with runoff, uh, we'll have a whole new focus on this. So uh, Dick, along those lines, so I like the idea of sending out different chapters to different groups, okay? And that, um, but is there, as far as water goes, and you say that blatantly obvious statement is not correct, is there a once over we should do edits on here before we send it out to somebody? Or do you think we send it out as is and then make the edits afterwards? I think we should do something with first. And to feel like we're saying, hey, it's the sustainability plan. Why don't you do something with it? Versus us taking the lead on at least looking through it going, okay, we, we've done some things or we haven't done things. Because maybe we want to take something out or we want to add something before it even goes to another group. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I'd feel more comfortable with that because I kind of want to send out something a bit more polished that we're on the same page with. Um, but then I definitely think it'd be good to get their feedback, even their lead on it, but just even a once over for one month. Yeah. It, well, one question I have is what exactly is the scope of the work that we're trying to delegate both the, the, level of delegating within the committee as well as the level of delegating them for input from other committees uh, for instance are we looking at the subgroups identifying issues and saying okay here, here are some red marks some you know things questions to look at to give that back to kelly or are we supposed to really come with a i mean depending on how large the scope is and where we're trying to assign the different 
tasks associated with it, it could be like Dick is saying, incredibly huge and in, you know just impossible to do, or it could maybe be more manageable. But I think we need to kind of set our bar for what we're asking the subgroups to do and how much time we're wanting to delegate to that or assign to that. So Kelly and I, and I, Kelly can speak up also, but I think as far as the, the subgroups, the thought is go through it and say, what have we talked about? What do we do? Like, really, this is an opportunity for people who have passion about energy use or land use or water to be able to step up and say, I know a lot about this because I think that's kind of where our committee goes a lot of time is a lot of people know a lot about a lot of things, but we have to figure out how to get it into something that is uh, achievable goals. And, it, and if, if it was to me, I would say we have subcommittees of like three people for each chapter. So you're going to have a couple of different ones. Um, you, you aren't going to be on all of them and you're going to jump and you're going to have uh, a couple meetings, one, two, three meetings, uh, potentially for a, a Zoom meeting or face-to-face -to, -face to kind of go over thoughts and work through it and just kind of come up with an overall, these are the bullet points that we think we need to do because we have the da data in there. We want to be able to track things, we want to be able to do it. And we come through and we have that information and bring it back. And my thought is whether Kelly writes it or if somebody else really gets excited about writing it to step it up or contract that out if, if we need to. Kelly, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, if I, you know, at a committee meeting, let's say we were doing land use and the land use folks came to the meeting and said, here's a, we're giving to give our, our presentation. Here's a brief summary of what the chapter contains so that everyone knows who wasn't in that committee. And then saying, we, we feel like we, these are the recommendations we provide for how, what edits this needs or what needs to be added or what should be taken out. These are the indicators and the metrics we think should be added or should stay as is. Like that would be incredible guidance for me to have, um, or if certain bits of language need to be changed, then I can take that and rewrite the chapter given with your recommendations and then bring it back to the committee for final approval. Well, okay. I want to, yeah, that, that's helpful. I just want to jump in on back on the water. I mean, yeah, I, I understand. I forget who was said that maybe we work it over first, but that puts a lot of burden on us to become experts in stuff that the Water Resources Commission really is doing a lot with. And so I, I would prefer, hey, we have a plan. It's outdated and just say this is what is on the books. Would you give us general comments on areas that you would like to see us uh, change or add or update and, and, uh, and then let us take that and rework it rather than take what we know now is outdated and start trying to rework it. It just feels like that's extra work before we get the, the real input of actually more experts on it. It puts more burden on us to become better involved a better knowledge base on these topics than than the experts now dick if we i uh, um i don't know anything about the water resource committee yeah our their focus is not sustainability their focus is it, i mean it, it's, it's not all runoff what is what is their focus i mean we want to if we send it to um i mean it's like having um you know the head of the epa be the you know, an ex Exxon employee, right? You know, you, you, I don't know what they're, what they're, they may be knowledgeable in water, but it may not be actually be, and I don't know, that's more of a question. What is the, what, what is their job in, in the city? Well, I know a number of the people that are on the commission. I don't know all that they deal with, but I know they deal a lot with assessing stormwater management on various developments. Uh, they look a lot of those issues. I don't know what they do about our water supply and consumption stuff. I mean, they must have to re review that. that you know, I, area. I also think when you talk about runoff on developments, I mean, there's, there's two different concepts of that. You know, you have the developer who's saying, I just want to do the bare minimum and the engineers who say, I can design, how do you do the bare minimum? And then you have the people who are truly pushing it. And I think we are the ones who have to be pushing it. And, and we still will have that override. In that in the process, but I think um, 
that well, you have you have people like Ken Potter and Warren Gebert that are on it. Yeah. And uh, now Eric Booth, he's a really young uh, scientist, uh, you know, environmental engineer, and and they're looking at sustainability issues and seeing if a development that's been planned and proposed actually is doing the best they can. So I think they have to go over all development plans uh, uh, for you know new development and all the stormwater management issues. I don't. I doubt that they would do much on water consumption things, uh, but I don't. I don't really know all the things they do. But Kelly, could you could you get? Uh, I mean, talk to uh, is it, uh, Gary. What's his last name? Uh, Gary Huth. Yeah, I'm meeting with him tomorrow actually, so I can ask yeah, him I mean, these questions. Could you find out from him? What their re what their commission reaction would be to just taking a look at the water chapter of our sustainability plan and and make comments on it before we decide to go off on our own in one way or another. Yep, I can talk to them about it tomorrow. Um, I see a good uh, in the in the chat. I see a comment about the Dane County Climate Action Plan. Um, is there a uh, um, is there a something that can be you know taken from there where we don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel we can merge the two together there there might be but the climate action plan is just that a dane county climate action plan and so it's not a sustainability plan per se i think it's definitely something we should be consulting and reviewing and seeing how we can synchronize with it but it's a different different beast from what we're talking about right now okay. Of course, but so can I get a uh, can I get some uh, other members of the chat of our committee to chime in on their thoughts on on whether or not we think we need to do a once over before we go after it? I know Chris said yes, and uh, is there any other thoughts out there? Uh, I'll just say quickly that after what you said, Spencer and Kelly, about the level of engagement you're asking for, I think. I'm comfortable with us doing what I, I'd consider a high level <laughs> overview and review of the document chapter by chapter, not getting into the weeds where it becomes an overbearing and onerous burden, but to get some high level direction, confirmation, clarification, reemphasis, and then feed that as guidance to Kelly so that she can come up with a draft. Now, whether we want the other committees to look at it before the draft or after that's something else to discuss uh, but i do think that that would be an acceptable way to go in my book i would agree with kermit i don't think it has to be given to the uh, water resources before I, I feel like we can take a stab at it first and if we need extra help then go for it high level does, yes. does that mean you're on the on the on the work group, Katie? <laughs> you say no, for water you, when you say we, I, I wonder know. does that include you? Yeah. No, I'm mean, that's the royal we. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, when we go when we go to water resources, I think we'll end up having to take a chunk of the land use along with the water, mm. um, because I think there when you're talking about water management in general, I think there's probably I haven't read it word for word or i have but it's been a while and i've had several other plans in between those two but i think it's probably split between land use and the water section so it makes total I, sorry it just it makes total sense because we're always considering in council what we sh if we should buy land simply for um storm overflow maintenance etc so it absolutely goes hand in hand um and if i can uh if i look at different groups uh i mean instead of maybe doing 10 different work groups what if we had five different work groups and everyone takes two chapters right because if we can combine water and land use you're really taking the same two there i saw in the comments there was a comment about energy and climate right can we can we take those two uh those two categories and well i guess it's uh energy and greenhouse gases maybe. greenhouse gas emissions combine those two as kind of you're going to have a lot of similar thoughts between those two um if we take 
Uh, you know, we could do community and health could be, or it could be health and uh, maybe health and public outreach and education. Um, and then if we did uh, community and then economy, fair trade, food. And then the last one would be solid waste and transportation. Does that seem like a, a combination of two of them? Because what we could do is if, if everyone is prepared before a meeting, you really only, you have to read two chapters and then you have to look at the metrics of those, right? And you bring, bring your thoughts and say, what really we're asking, what is this plan missing? What does this plan miss a point on? And what has changed in the world that makes this plan, it makes us need to change this, right? Really have probably three questions to ask. And then we do a once over. Every group will give an be an opportunity to present over a couple month period. And then we send it out to all the, the different committees because I think we could do, um, what's the housing one? The um, What's our committee in the city that's? Uh, workforce housing. Workforce housing. I mean, I think they might, um, I think the arts committee might have something, you know, like a input on fair trade. I mean, I think there's, you could send it out to several different committees, land use, who obviously we have plenty of uh, uh, the parks and public lands. Like, I mean, they, I think we could send it out all across and, and get their input on it. And then we get that, that extra level of look over and then it's the final nuts and bolts. That seem reasonable to everyone? Mm -hmm. uh, can I have uh, two questions? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, how you uh, you know split the work? I, uh, I you know because I, I I'm not uh, quite uh, familiar with uh, the plan, and uh, so the first one is: uh, Do we have a clear timeline about uh, when the committee will be restructured? That means that we will have uh, some uh, people probably leave and some people join. And how do we uh, handle this kind of a situation? And uh, my second question is, I, I believe that a plan, we will look at uh, our state core and also thinking about uh, what can we improve? How can we uh, live better? How can we be more sustainable in the future? So uh, when we are going to uh, create uh, the list, you know, uh, something we can do. And uh, do we have a way to know what kind of like resources we have to help us uh, to move from here to there instead of we create a huge like a goal or you know like uh, a huge list but we cannot uh, get anything done so my two questions good so i think um so do we have a you're are you asking do we have a list of 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 uh, uh, what we're what our goals are the 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 two is uh, the first one is uh, the timeline to uh, restructure the sustainable committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have people in and out, and we if we split split the work now, um, how do we handle the kind of uh, you know issue? And the second is uh, resource. What kind of resources we have? If we uh, talk about like health, and uh, we are going to create uh, a lot of initiatives. What kind of like resources uh, we we uh, we know our what we have and uh, how do we move from here to there? So it's good. Yeah. So as far as timeline goes, I I believe there will probably be in the next month there will be some shuffling. I don't know when uh, our mayor will make new appointments and how many he's going to make. Um, but I think it, even if we uh i think if we create these subgroups and then we go on and we have the um you know the per new people come in and the new people leave say here's a couple of choices of committees you can join or subcommittees you can join to be a help on this and if somebody comes on with a who is a huge resource you know i'd gladly give up any of my positions on there if somebody was more knowledgeable and, and on that i would be able to trade with people um so i, I think I understand it could be an issue, but I think I almost hate to wait 
any longer. It feels like we've been waiting for them. Um, and as far as resources go, Kelly is probably better to speak about resources, but I do, I do know our 100% renewable energy and resilience goal is a, re, a resilience um, my resolution is, is definitely one that we should use to guide us on our, uh, on what, what our goals are for the city. I think, um, I think that Kelly's uh, most recent, the uh, comprehensive plan as a, a resource probably to guide us. Um, Dane County, um, I mean, that may be an interesting, um, an email, Kelly, if you could send us out a link to the Dane County plan, sure. yeah. the Madison plan, like just kind of go out there. Cause again, we're not trying to re recreate the wheel. We're just trying to uh, update the goals. And I guess the other thing, if I'm gonna monopolize the time and talk all the time is um, Kelly, if, uh, we went through what our goals, our individual goals were, and we did all those stickers on those charts. Um, a, a, I mean, because what we're doing in the sustainability plan is we're creating a list of goals that we want to, to do. We have that list, if that would be sent out also in our, um, as far as resources of what people to fr frame, work their mind around, I think that might be a good one also. Yeah, it actually is in the, um, I did that for the last meeting that we didn't attend because of COVID. It was the March, I don't know, like the March 16th meeting, which we canceled last minute because of the quarantine that just yeah. had begun. In that agenda packet, um, I think that I, in that one, I highlighted the top two voted on goals that the committee had as, you know, it doesn't align exactly with the sustainability plan, but it it kind of shows the updated priorities that this committee has for work that we'd like to do. And we, you know, those would be good to insert into the sustainability plan. So oh, I, I, I also, I'll resend those out to the committee. And is it, I mean, if you, if we just, because you have it ranked by number of votes, I mean, if you just put that list of 10 or 15 or 25, whatever, I don't know if we need to do all of them if they didn't get votes on there. But if there was an email with that, with mm -hmm. the Dane County plan, the um, probably the Paris Climate Action Plan, um, and then the Comprehensive Plan, just so everybody has the resources in front of them when they're when they're looking at it and trying to draw in. At least everyone's starting with the same framework. Andy, does that help uh, help answer your questions? Yeah, I think so. And uh, I'm also thinking about uh, the other thing is, uh, do we have that kind of survey? like uh, previously used uh, to uh, collect like a uh, data and the information. For example, like uh, if we want to want know um, one of the dimensions or all of the dimension, what's missing and uh, what should be done, do we have a way to uh, collect like uh, information from the public to be the input uh, before we uh, start to, you know, define the problem and understand our current situation and then make our plan? So that's uh, because uh, I'm not, I think, uh, you know, I have only one brain or maybe uh, my peers, you know, on the same uh, subgroup, we have just a few. But if we could have uh, some kind of like input, I know it will take uh, some more time and the resources, but I'm just wondering if that's uh, possible. Yeah, um, I, I do feel more comfortable when we get public input. Um, we did do extensive public input back in 2009, I think before the, pl the first plan was written and there were visioning sessions and um, community groups that got together. Um, if we did it right now, we'd have to do it more through surveys probably. Um, there will be public input um, built into the comp plan review and the comp plan, um, I think, I've tried to write it so that it fits in as an overarching document above the sustainability plan so that it all feeds down. Um, so hopefully some of the community engagement we can do for our sustainability plan might be looped into our comp plan public engagement, which will be happening this summer. Um, we could maybe try to work in conjunction with that. Kelly, the, the other resource to put in there is the um, 
that grant we did that between all the communities about how to become 100% uh, net zero. That, uh, that we, I know we just got that back recently. Um, I think that would be another good resource for people. You know, we just had that work done. And I think, I th oops, sorry, I muted it, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, I think that will help the energy uh, help direct that a lot. Um, but I think, so if I'm gonna have a, my, my goal I think would be to, if I wanted the order, I would think about it. We do a once over with small groups of, of each do two chapters. And then we do a, we have quick presentations between everybody at, at the meeting. So we, then we can get not only our three brains who are working on it, but we can get the 10 people who have, have done it. You get the idea, send it out to the, the, the specific committees throughout the city that would make, make sense to get their input. And then I think that's the time after there's a, a, a pretty good document to present it to the public for public input. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what had happened on uh, the Pheasant Branch plan. They, they had a pretty high level plan put together with some options in there. And then they presented it to the public, presented it to each of the committees. Um, I, I think that might be I would say maybe go committees and then come back with an actual final plan because none of us are, uh, except for Kelly, is good at writing plans. Does that sound reasonable? Um, anybody want to, so the categories, water and land use, anybody have excitement on that one besides Dick? <laughs> Come on, Deb. Okay, all right. I kind of like fair trade, but it's okay. Oh, let's have people say what they, what they <laughs> what, Deb, land you, use, say fair trade. Land use is okay too, because of, you know, being with the friends and that's, we talk about that a lot. All right, I'm, I'm gonna put you on fair trade for right now. We're gonna see, we may have to shuffle around a little bit. Um, Kermit, which one is your excitement? excitement? Let's see, greenhouse gas with gases with climate change and um, energy Okay, would be the, I think that was the pair we were talking about. Okay, I have to flip through here, see who we, uh, who else we have on the screen. Uh, Katie, you got some, one you're excited about? Uh, the first one that came to mind was health. What was that one going to be paired with? Um, uh, public. I have public pu outreach and education? Public outreach, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, Lee Schwartz. Uh, again, I, I guess my concern would be, I, I, I'm thinking I'm probably not gonna be on the committee in the next go round, but, but my interest right now would be along the lines of Kermit, which would be renewable energy and um, greenhouse gases. Okay. Um, Andy. You're muted, Andy. I'm sorry, I just uh, talked about it, but I forgot to uh, <laughs> <laughs> mute. <laughs> I will be happy to join economy. Economy. Um, and that was, hmm. which one was economy? Economy, food, fair trade. Is that combined with community? Yeah, community, fair trade. Okay, so that's uh, Andy. Okay, good. Um, Chris? I was interested in the education and outreach, and I can't remember what that was combined with. Health? Okay. Okay. Um, perfect. Um, is there anybody who is, who are we missing from the, we have Angie? Um, put her on solid ways. Yeah, I think <laughs> Andy should get nominated right there. Um, I actually am pretty interested in transportation. I think uh, I might put myself on that one if I was going to have one one choice off the matter. Um, who else are we missing? Is Daphne on the call? She's not today tonight. What about um, So she would probably fit well underneath the. Um, education and public outreach. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, Kelly, am I missing anybody? See. No, that's that's all ten committee members, and then I can jump on um, any of them, or you know, multiple, all of them. It doesn't matter. Maybe water land use, since it's just Dick right now, and we're on we're on other <laughs> community water things as well. So, so with with the way we have it. There's, it's two people on every one, and there is three on health and public outreach, which I think is fine just because of num our numbers. Is it, um, is anybody ambitious and want to do another group, or do we want to just have two people work on it, and sometimes it's easier to do groups of two than groups of three anyway? Mm -hmm. How about Sherry? I mean, she's not officially on the committee, I guess, but boy, you certainly know a lot about all this energy stuff that would feel like that you ought to help yeah, on that if you can. Jerry, do you have uh, something you'd like to volunteer with? Um, I Yes, I would volunteer for energy and climate. And okay. I'm really involved in the Dane County one, so I'm fully familiar with it. Okay, Sherry is going to be on that one. And then I see uh, we also have Carol and Andy on here. I, I don't know if, the, if you guys are interested in uh, helping out with anything, but uh, if, you're, if you'd like to, well, you could speak up. Uh, either outreach or energy and climate. Um, those are two things we're most knowledgeable about. Awesome. Um, so, uh, any, you Welcome to do either one of them. Lee is probably dropping from the energy and climate, so we would be back to three on there if you would like to do that one. Sure. Okay. So Lee, you're still on the hook, so don't don't bail on us yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I think that would be good. Now, Kelly, do you have the list of? Did you type it out all at the same time? Yeah, I have it typed out. I think um, I I might I could reach out to Bob Owen too because he's really engaged with the transportation mun municipal transportation and getting the fleet converted, and he's also really interested in biodigesters. Yeah. So um, that seems like a logical fit if he wants. He's he does he's calls me a lot and is really engaged. So I think he'd want to continue working. I think that would uh, would make sense if uh, if he would like to go out with that one. Um, for when, the record, um, I'm not saying he must do that. Right, right. <laughs> when, uh, when we have, I guess what I would recommend, I'm just trying to think to how, if, if anybody is excited about doing, I mean, does it make sense to include you, Kelly, when the email is sent out to schedule these meetings between the small groups? And then if anybody step, stops, you know, mentions something like Bob or if somebody else contacts you and says, I really would like to be involved in this, um, be able to point them in the direction of when the timing for the meeting is going to happen. Does that make sense? Do we have any issue with quorums here or anything like that? Or is this because we're less than a quorum, it's, it's okay to meet? I'm just curious right. about that. It's less than the quorum. Yeah. As long as we're five or less, we're okay. Okay. Kelly, do you want to receive emails with uh, with when these are, meetings are happening, or do you not? Or is your inbox full? Yeah, I'd I'd like to. Then I'll put them on the calendar and know when they and I can attend some of them if I can. Okay. Good. Thank you guys for uh, reluctantly volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually think really what I I'm hoping is that there can be if we're prepared, it can be one meeting. Of brainstorming because even one meeting of, of two people's minds going after it to tick through what what's on there and have an open discussion about it that may be all that we need in order to give enough direction to Kelly to make this happen and I would also say that you know I know it looks like it's it is overwhelming but the the information that it has compiled we can at least be confident that you know, it started with the sustainability in 2010, and then it was looked over and worked on quite extensively by Slipstream with 
um, additional comments from the committee back in 2017. And then it was further reviewed by Stacy Reese when she was a sustainability coordinator and Abby and an intern. So it's not, it's not completely raw. I mean, a lot of people have looked at it and edited it. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think if we came up with something we thought was perfect and then handed it off to a committee two years down the road, they'd say like, oh, we need to do so much editing. So just always remember that there has been a lot of work done up to this point. Um, you just need to add what you think you can add. Um, and I, I think the other thing that I would uh, like to challenge everyone, if there is a sidebar um, on all, all of these subjects, resiliency, I think is, uh, especially with uh, COVID and the flooding, um, I think all of them we can look at as a resiliency mindset. So if you have a sentence or two about your, your two chapters that you're doing that pertains to resiliency, write that out in your notes on the side somewhere and then maybe Kelly can pull all that information because that's really writing a new a new chapter on resiliency um, and that may be uh, a little guidance on that also okay so the questions are it, uh, is there something that's blatantly wrong or that we feel that is really wrong within the uh, the parameters of it what do we need to improve or what has changed in the world that makes us think differently or what you know what we're missing okay those you answer those questions and and maybe it's going to be nothing but maybe i'm guessing there's probably a little couple things on, on each of them that we'll have to talk about spence what was fair trade coupled with um so if you look at the the notes you can see it in there so you have uh fair, so fair trade is economy food and fair trade was one one chapter in there and the other chapter was community Community goes with fair trade, food, and economy? Uh, so economy, food, and fair trade is one chapter. Oh. And the other chapter that group is looking at is the community chapter. OK, because I had, I had health with community, but health is with something else? Health is with public, uh, public outreach and education. OK, thank you. Yep. I'm also not sure where equity fit in if it was if it was put into more of the community section or the economy, food, fair trade, but in all the sections, I also task all of you to put that language in and think about when you're looking at indicators, what, what equity indicators there are and also what actions would center, um, center the most vulnerable populations or whatever terminology, it's, I don't have the right terminology, but, um, we really need to think about equity in all of this. It's everyone always talks about it, but it rarely gets embedded into plans in a really meaningful way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Kelly, here's a question, million dollar question. Um, we have these groups and we have the, the goal for everyone to meet. Does, does everybody have, the, uh, does everybody meet before the next sustainability committee meeting? So we have one month to, to meet. That seemed like a reasonable goal to meet and to at least do a once over on it. Will we be doing, a, will we, do you envision the next sustainability meeting we go through all of the sections? Because that might be a lot to go through. I was thinking maybe we'd stagger it some. Yeah. So maybe I would, that. I would agree. So um, initial thought was do one each month, right? Um, but I think having um, having them all in one month is going to be too much. If we over five months, we could do it. But if I guess if we do it over five months and we one group presents each month, mm -hmm. um, then we will have once that group meets and presents, then it can be sent and recommended to the other chapter. So it doesn't have to happen all week, five months down the road to do it. Okay. So when we're looking at these, these things, if, can we put a calendar together for who wants to do it? Does, does anybody for next month want to step up and do the first uh, presentation of, the, uh, of theirs? Is, is one month enough to people feel? I mean, even whoever's going to do that that time, because we're talking about reading some of these resources and references, 
and then reviewing the chapters and then getting together for a meeting and I, and just if that's all I was doing that would be one thing but I'm okay so this is what I'm, I'm just raised the question I, 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 I will have Angie and myself present next one month I can get it done in a month um, okay and, and then, so, so then you have at least two months okay good all right so <laughs> put, put Angie and myself down as, as one month out um, so that is June um, July anybody want to step up for July Dick, do you want to do July just so that we can do our piece and then send it to water resources for a look over? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to, you know, we can switch. I'm getting into summer and finally I'm getting out of this house and going outdoors and doing stuff, you know, so. <laughs> but let's, I, I'm guessing that we're not going to reinvent the wheel on water here. So yeah, let's, no. the, the thing that worries me is the land use chapter because quite frankly, I haven't thought much about that. I know how land use affects water, but what do, do we have to deal with all the development issues and density of development? Is that part of land use? Because that's a whole other ballgame. Right. And, and, and it, it's already written. Remember, it's already right. written. It's just and, digging into what it says and trying <laughs> to say, are we missing anything? Yeah, okay. And it's high level. It's not like you're drafting. Well, I'm order. flying over at satellite level, I can tell you. That. <laughs> All right. All right, July, sure. July, okay. Is, is, Deb, on, is Deb on this along with Kelly? Uh, it just, it just you and Kelly. I thought Deb said she could do land well, use. <laughs> I, I said I could do that, but then... You did Deb say you I, could. Yeah, so she did, did say, say she I did do. say I could, but and then I put on fair trade. And your oh. sustainability thing is canceled for this for June. I just got the email. So you got all kinds of extra time. <laughs> right. Um, Deb and I work well together. So. Okay, well, Deb, Deb is going to find out when the meeting is, but Deb is with Andy for uh, uh, community. Well, I was going to say, Andy, if we, if we wanted to maybe get ready for July, we could give um, Dick another month. To I don't it. want August. I'm not going to be here. I just know. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're talking about the, the Wisconsin Master Naturals. You don't have to do that. So you have extra time. Oh, good, good. But that was in June. Never mind. That was in June. <laughs> I'm with July. You gave it to me. Uh, uh, Deb and Andy just volunteered for August. Yes. Is that all right, Andy? I'm okay with the August or July. I'm okay too. Okay. Well, there you um, go. How about health <laughs> yeah. and public outreach? Is that okay for September? Yeah, yeah I think that works. In, uh, yep. There? Yep, that works. Okay. Um, I think that's kind of laid out. What we'll do is once we, once we do it, and again, it does not have to be terribly time consuming, guys. I appreciate everybody volunteer, volunteering to do this. It doesn't have to be over the top. Uh, oh, I forgot about energy and climate. That one is-, is Yeah, October, I, was, huh? I was gonna chime in. So that looks like that'd be October? Yeah. No, 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 no I'll just ask for a consideration of, is there any way we could do two group Two subgroup presentations a month and wrap things up a little faster would be. I agree. I mean, I know I was pushed saying one month was too soon, but now I'm going to go, okay, five or six months <laughs> could be pulled in a little faster because, you know, right now we're topic. the rate limiting step. You're doing an important topic. It ought to be earlier. Energy and climate, did it just get moved up to June also? No, I didn't say moving up to June. I <laughs> About not August. June, not June for that, because I'm do actually ha I have to do a, a GHG um, emissions assessment or a for lead. So I'll have that app in another probably two months. It'll be complete. Yeah. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just do one the first month, one in June? Our summer agenda does calm down a little bit usually when we do it in the summer. What if we do two of them in August and two of them in September? How about we do energy and climate in September? I'm sorry, I said September. I should have meant July and August are the two months we're doing them in. What did you say, Sherry? Oh, I was just recommending that energy and climate did September, but you just changed the month. Well, if we do two a month it and one the first month, yeah. one in so, June, 
June, so August, or June, July, to August. So August. Okay. August. Okay, so energy and climate is August. And then- Chris, what do you think about uh, health going in July? Yeah, that works. I think that should give us enough time. Yeah. Okay, so health is going in July. So we get two in August, two in July. Kelly, do your notes make any sense? Mine don't anymore. <laughs> 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 so um, I have solid waste transportation in June and then the health and public outreach in July and also the water and land use in July and then energy and climates in August and then the community economy food fair trades in August. That sounds great. Okay. So um, can I have uh, two uh, requests? The first one is uh, would uh, Ju, uh, Katie, please uh, send out the word, the file to us. Because now we have only the PDF file of the, the sustainability um, plan. Oh, yeah. I'll send out the word. Yeah, yep. the word done. And uh, the second thing is, uh, would you please also send out the, the uh, email and uh, who will be doing what? And uh, what the timeline too, so we have a clear like the idea after the meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, a question, I don't know um, how this uh, will be uh, done. Is that uh, okay for the subgroup to meet like uh, uh, privately? Mm -hmm. And would they be also considered as uh, like a public meeting or something? I don't know what's the policy there to regulate such kind of like a meeting. Not if it's less than a quorum, you can meet in small groups. You, when, if, there's, if it's less than a quorum, there's no, you're not allowed to vote on anything. You have to have a quorum for the committee to officially approve anything. But you, know, you can do work groups. When we did the sustainability resolution, we did a lot of meetings like this. With the, the gardens did a lot. There's, there's been a lot of meetings like this historically. So uh, there, there's no issues with it if that's okay. And does this consider as a, like a public meeting? I mean, uh, should we use uh, like uh, the same email address to communicate? I see. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. If, if we communicate by email back and forth to each other, is that something that is, uh, I think, public records uh, to search for? Or is that... Uh, if it's not official voting on anything, does it make a difference if it's between volunteer citizens? And uh, do we, yeah, do we need to go to uh, KD too, or we can just uh, contact each other directly? No, I think if I think if it's just your smaller group, you can email back and forth. It's different when you email the entire committee about city business. That's mm -hmm. when you get into open records laws. But if you're just emailing back and forth, like let's let's have a Zoom meeting on Thursday. This is what I have what I think about the chapter after I read it. You can do that in between yourselves. So this does, this kind of like uh, exchange does not a subject to a public record law? I don't think so, but I will check on that and confirm yeah. and send that out in the email. Are you, yeah. are you suggesting I that? I think technically it could be subject to a public records inquiry if somebody were to ask, gee, where did this come from? What meetings were held? Who talked? I mean, that we might have to provide email records for that request. But I'll, I'll let you, Kelly, follow that up with the official party line. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll, I'll make sure. I know we've had loads of open records requests in the last year, tons. So I know about, people know the answer. <laughs> how about actually coordinating a meeting you've just seen two or three people are we going to do this by zoom or and is that to be set up as a, a a formal zoom meeting and you have to record it or what's going on with that or is this I, well if it's just you and me for example on water and land use you and i can email i guess and or talk or would you talk by skype or do we have to do a telephone or how do we do this I think we could decide. It's basically the same as when you and Deb and I got together at Bariks to talk about Earth Day. We yeah. didn't, it wasn't a public meeting. It was, we didn't have to take notes or anything. It was just, uh, we met and chatted. Okay, but given the COVID and we're not getting together for public conditions, I'm, I'm assuming, should, should people in their small little groups still do it by, by Zoom or? 
I would be prefer I mean, do it yeah. whether it's Zoom or Google Meet or whatever. I mean, I think uh, I'm not encouraging anybody to go face to face um, <laughs> right now. Yeah. But if you know, I, uh, I think it's all up to any, however anybody wants to meet. If you want to do it over the phone, I think it's probably more impactful. Um, you know, if you have Zoom and want to record it, you know, like for, for the record, you're welcome to do that too. But I don't think it's not required anywhere. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, Sound good? I would be voting for a Zoom Zoom meeting for my subgroup, anyways, just just for safety and health and speed. So Kelly, when you send it out, you'll send uh, you'll send each of the people who who are in each committee and the 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 date they're planning they need to present to the committee yet. Yep, I will. Okay, perfect. So. Uh, should we move on to the next agenda item? Anybody uh, against that idea? Okay, item number two. Um, how does the COVID-19 response and sustainability intersect and does it change our work priorities immediately and or long-term? Well, because we've just had a long discussion, I'm not gonna launch into another long discussion, but um, Specifically, I just wanted everyone to be aware that as we open up downtown economically um, with the businesses, there are some ideas being floated about closing Hub Hubbard Street, which doesn't look now like that's going to happen, but that was an idea that the planning department put forward. And so now the downtown um, business association and the, um, the CDA, what's the, you know what the community development association, is that what that stands for, Katie? Um, are, talk are talking about, um, you know, other ways we can provide maybe more outdoor seating for some of the restaurants so that if they meet their capacity inside with fewer people, they might mm -hmm. be able to provide extra seating out in the plaza area or in the, some parking spaces because some people will feel more comfortable in the open air rather than being inside a restaurant. I know I'm not gonna feel comfortable going inside any establishment for months, probably. Um, so there's just ideas being floated. So I'm just thinking some of this stuff comes with um, sustainability. Um, you know, maybe they'll be using throwaway cups and plates and that kind of thing, I'm not sure. Or um, there's gonna be a lot of changes to how we do things. And I just wanna have it on people's radar that how how this how COVID will affect sustainability and also when we move forward on our uh, on our priorities one of the things we had prioritized was resiliency planning we now currently um, are you know thinking about our long-term budget and so asking for a large chunk of money to do resiliency planning might be a big ask budget wise but I also feel like it may be more important than ever plus it's required by our as part of our 100% um, renewable energy goals, it's it's embedded into that resolution. So, um, you know, there's th there's things like that, and also just when we go into the business community and ask for changes in plastic, reach single plastic reduction. What would that mean for a business that's already stressed out about um, everything right now? just COVID really will affect a lot of the language we use in our plans and in our public events and how we talk about sustainability. And um, I don't know, I, I guess it's more just, this was just a placeholder because there's a lot on my mind and I haven't sorted it out yet, but I just think we all need to be careful how we talk about sustainability and um, keeping it front and center, but also maybe we need to focus more on the economic and the social side of it right now um, because that's what's absolutely necessary I don't know no oh, I I agree completely and I think that I mean our, we can combine this with our number three item the single-use plastic yeah. subgroup and really this group was to be meeting with to come up with ideas to meet with the, the chamber right um, that is I think the chamber probably has a lot more on their mind right now I don't think it's uh, I don't think single-use plastic is less important of a conversation to have, but I think our our uh, our way to do it. I think we should still create a subgroup or 
uh, we're working group and, and, and come up with, so when it's time to launch it, we can. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, if you're talking about COVID, I think we are, when, when oil prices bottomed out, I think there was an opportunity to switch, you know, I mean, could, could have you, we let everyone go out of, could have we let, you know, the big oil companies go under and, and recreate an economy at the time, right? I mean, there's obviously, there's a lot more to worry about that, you know, about people's health, but I do think there's, there could be a very good timing of opportunity that could come out of this where we say, this is the time to embrace this because the world needs it. So I think it should always be front and center. Go ahead, Dick. Yeah, I think the, the, the working group that you've got on solid waste could kind of fold at least some broader objectives in as they look at that, you know. I'm glad you volunteered me. That's good. No, no, I'm saying that you've already assigned a group taking on a topic. I mean, Angie and I forget who else was going to help her they would uh, be looking at that. Yes, I will make sure it's on our on our agenda when we talk about it. Anybody else have any other thoughts or ideas about uh, COVID before we move on? All right, let's move to single use plastic. Um, do you want me to uh, tackle that a little bit when we do our uh, transportation and solid waste meeting and report back on it? And then maybe a, a month from now, we will have more thoughts and insights. And maybe that's that's one thing we could send to our committee. We could send it to the chamber at that time or something if we wanted to have a section of that. Sure, and I know Kate um, Kate Wicker from the chamber talked about perhaps putting together a survey for businesses. Um, that might be one good way to bridge kind of the COVID economic recovery with coming back with sustainability as a focus, like rising from the ashes in a new way. You know, what what new changes could businesses be willing to make or that might even benefit them financially? Um, through a sustainability lens um, and how, you know, maybe we need to ask businesses some questions in a survey that relates to plastic, but also um, relates to how they're planning to recover and come back from this. I don't know. But yeah, that would be mm -hmm. good, Spencer. I liked your idea. Yeah. I think Angie will have um, some good insights in that for that too. Absolutely. Okay. We'll move on to uh, the Madison group by. Yeah, this has just been an agenda item that's been on the agenda for months and we've just either missed our meeting for quorum or because of the pandemic. And um, I just wanted to make a final decision on this and let you guys vote on it so that I can let Sam from Renew know. He's asked me several times about the status. Um, Green Tier Legacy Communities, which is um, something that Middleton's a part of as a community, also is working on gathering all the group buy options in the state to help communities, and they're interested in what our decision tonight is on the Madison program. I really am interested to hear what, um, what I'm interested in what Sherry was talking about, something that's maybe less costly, but um, I also think now, you know, Economically, it's a really uncertain time for a lot of people, but for other people who've kept their jobs and got stimulus checks, it might be a time for them to launch into a type of group buy situation with solar um, mm -hmm. for resiliency reasons. So I don't think it's necessarily a horrible time to do something like this, but um, it's the cost and it's up to the committee. So I know we've discussed this in the past, and I want to have Lee's opinion on this at some point here too, because he's we've talked about it in the community fest, um, and I can't remember what it was. But we had so Sherry mentioned the other group I like so group eyes for anyone to participate in them, whether it's Madison, whether or not Middleton gives any money to it, it right. they can still participate in this one or the other ones, right? Um, right. The question is, do we want to spend $2,500 marketing where they say they'll be putting more, more marketing towards Middleton? Um, and if they are, and it helps us achieve our goal, awesome. Um, is it going to get pe people's attention 
regardless if they're in Middleton or not. We had asked Sam when he came to the meeting to come back to us and let us know what kind of marketing was going to be done in Middleton. And I can't remember that we ever heard back from him on what what was specifically <laughs> going to happen. Do you, Kelly? I know that they were planning to do three um, look, three events in your city, um, meeting with the community um, for that amount of money, plus I think advertising um, locally, but it was going, I think the main part of it was the three events. And when for is sure. the, when is this going to launch? Hasn't it? I think it is, I don't know how the, I don't know how COVID affected it. I know that it was going to yeah. be this summer or sp spring and summer, but I don't know if it got pushed back. I, I should know because I think I even saw an email about it. Um, I'm just not sure. And I mean, we can't really have any events anytime. I mean, right. you know, so is, is the marketing going to be changed and do we, uh, I don't, I think Renew is a great, great company and I think it's a great, uh, a great program. I don't know if, if what different, I'm not sure I was, if I personally have been convinced that it makes a difference except for a act of goodwill to donate $2,500 yeah. as far as marketing. I, I'm kind of with Spencer with you on that because it, the question I have is, okay, what does the $2,500 get us? What's the opportunity cost? If we're really trying to leverage awareness, is there a better way to spend that money or can we do just as much for less, especially given the constraints of the COVID-19 situation? Because basically, like you say, Spencer, it's like, I could participate in Madison, you could participate in Madison and Middleton doesn't need to spend any money. At the same time, the group by that Sherry was talking about, we could sign up with that if we wanted to, and we don't need to have the sustainability committee spend any money. So what do we want to do with $2,500 and is giving it to renew the best thing to do? Other thoughts? Yeah, my recollection from last time was that we got some interest at the events, but then I think only like one or two people actually ended up in the buy, right? And so if you think about that, that just seems like for $2,500, that's maybe not the kind of, uh, uh, you know, actual follow through we were looking for. I would almost think our, our, if, if we wanted to create a marketing, if we, if we took the Madison post uh, and posted it on the city's Facebook page and spent $250 boosting it, we might actually get more low and, and, and po po boost it only to Middleton or, you know, whatever surrounding radius of we wanted to in the area. I, we almost might get more bang for a buck with people that way than actually participating in their, in their program. I think Spencer just um, volunteered for the outreach and public education section. <laughs> Let me know when it meets. <laughs> Welcome to the committee. That's right. <laughs> um, Katie, you got any opinions on it? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, um, my sense is, my gut sense is the same as yours. Um, for three public outreach events, it doesn't mean anyone's going to show up at the public outreach events. Okay. You know, that's cynical, but I feel like you're on track with like other ways to get the point across. Deb, how about you? Well, as uh, I'm not as familiar with Madison as I am with um, this co-op, um, there's a lot of incentive for people to get solar at the moment because there's a 26% um, tax credit that you can get as well as um, you can get money back from focus on energy if you sign up like within the next couple of, of months and things so 
I don't know what you're going to get for $2,500, uh, what the benefit to the committee would be for that, as opposed to what you said, you know, $250 and then put it on the website and it, just to get the word out. Um, okay. you know, I, I don't know. I what is heard that? anything that anybody is supporting it. Can we just agree we're not going to spend it? Um, you, you, almost, almost. I, 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 uh, Chris, do you have an opinion on it? when he came to speak i wasn't i wasn't impressed with what we were going to get at that point i felt we could do well without it so i wasn't um i wasn't in favor at the time okay um i might be missing people on there um kelly is there is there any damage to our relationship uh by like you're in the position where you're working with these people all the time and is there any is there any goodwill that gets happened by doing something like this that is more than we are taking into account? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of money for our small operating budget. It's a large chunk of what we have available. So um, I do think in the near, nearish future, we should talk about um, expenditures we might wanna make from that, as opposed to budget asks we'll ask in the fall. It's never okay. too early to kind of start thinking about that. Um, so if there's alternatives to that, to not spending money and getting the same return, then great. Um, I think that, that, that Renew would understand, you know, that especially now cities are really strapped for, there's a lot of uncertainty and everyone's kind of like not wanting to spend money until they know if they spend it, it's gonna really pay off. So it's not that it can't, that you, it can't be justified, um, the decision, but it's really up to you. I mean, I would support either way. Okay. Um, looks like it. Carol, I, I did not see that you had a hand up. You wanna give me two cents worth here quick? Oh, well, I, I was just gonna say, that we're not particularly interested in supporting a particular group by or a particular company. Um, but if there's a way that's practical to get people thinking about solar and interested in solar um, while they're sort of preoccupied with COVID, I think that would be a great thing. Uh, just speaking for us on our house, uh, our last electric bill was negative. Um, our solar is doing so well right now. So, um, I don't know if that would be like mass mailings or if that would be like yard signs or billboards or you know something that would get the word out to have people to think to buy solar. But sort of since we've already put solar on our house, if we could help the word world by putting in some money so that other people get solar, we'd be happy to do that. I mean, our family, that's what we do. We donate to things and support things. And so if there were a way we could contribute money, we'd be happy to. Cool. Okay. So I seem to be hearing the same sentiment everywhere. Someone, uh, do we need to make a motion to vote on this to not do it? I move that we not spend this money on this program. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Should, should we say there was some talk about still spending some money or donating some money? Is that something we wanted to do? Is there a, do we want to say we're, we don't want to go in for a $2,500, but we'd be, we, we'd be happy to work with Madison and see how we could help promote their program for them? I think they would also do less um, with less money. You know what I mean? Like if 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 Carol yeah. would want to put in money, or if we decided to put in a small chunk of money, then you could you could probably have a a lesser version of what they were offering, unless you just want to. Unless Carol wants to make a donation to their program, I think they do good work um, well, overall. So I should amend my motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, why? But why not? just work with a legacy solar, uh, solar co-op program, which isn't asking for money input. 
Yeah, it could do that and then advertise that. I, I think it's I think it's good to advertise both programs, both. right? If anybody wants right. to, I mean, it doesn't matter. As a city of Middleton, we don't care which group buy we, we do. We just want our citizens to be able to have, have a buy, right? Right. All right, so should we just take the matter as it sits in front of us and and stick with the, the motion to deny the $2,500 payment? I think that makes sense, unless yeah. we want to amend it and say we're willing, just a sentence on the end, we're willing to work with Madison or any other group by to help promote it um, to the best we can from the city of Middleton. All right, I will amend my motion and say that we are, I move that we not spend $2,500 to take part in the program. However, if we choose to, we can pay a smaller amount to help promote the program. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, says no. So do a friendly yeah. amendment. <laughs> is there a second? Do, do we want to say what that? Did I amend it properly? I mean, Deb, what do you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. You, you tell me what you think I should have said. Well, I was just wondering if it seems a little loosey goosey. <laughs> For lack of better. No, no, let's just deny it first. Let's, let's vote out. on this. Okay. I move that we not pay twenty five hundred dollars. Second. Which I'd already seconded. Okay. That's the original okay. one. Yeah. Perfect. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So. How about we just say, for the record, we're willing to help Madison. We don't need a motion to say we're going to help them. But if, if there's something we can do to through the city to get the word out, you know, and would like to ask us, we'd love to try to help them. Because we're not against it. We're just not for $2,500. And, and, and extend that to say any group by program. Yep. You know, so the yeah. West Absolutely. Madison or the West Dane one or the Madison one. Well, and in terms of, of providing uh, or money, um, it's run by Legacy Co Solar Co-op, and they sell um, they sell bonds. They're two hundred fifty dollars a piece, so it's an investment return on money. But then those bonds go to help other people who can't afford it um, put solar on, and it doesn't necessarily go on houses. It, like that's how they put the solar on Willie Street Co-op East, and things so um anyway there are other good opportunities out there great all right um the middleton high school uh update we're not going to have is that correct kelly yeah daphne had her finals tonight or this week all right how about a motion to adjourn so moved perfect second i got it i got it Thank you guys. I uh, appreciate who it. Second, who seconded to adjourn? I always miss that and I just pick one. Permit. <laughs> okay. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. And the table, we will chat. Looking forward to the minutes. What? We will chat. Looking forward to We do.